it at a 60. A please, hold on. Please, no, 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 we're, no, 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 hold on. No, we're all reproduction objects. Go to an extent. So let me ask you something. So horrific. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question, please? The 60-year-old woman cannot have children. A 60-year-old man can still have hundreds of children. Now, I'm just asking you one simple question. Did Jesus, your God, did he make a mistake in creating it this way? It seems out of whack and it seems out of order to me. A 60-year-old woman cannot have any babies. A 60-year-old man can not only have babies, he can have hundreds of, he can father hundreds of children. Did God make a mistake? My God didn't, but I want to understand in your worldview, why did Jesus create it that way? I just want to understand. Why can a 70 year old man have hundreds, sometimes hundreds of, of, of children? A okay, 70 so year old woman logic, cannot have any. Can I, by your logic, by your logic, the point is, is that men should go on procreating, 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 right, as they get older because they can, just because their biology says that they can, that that's a reason okay, to go on why procreating. Why did God create that biology? Why did God create that biology? And if, if they're I'll not to act on that. I'll ask when I get to heaven. I'll ask when I get to heaven. I don't know. Okay, if, you don't know, thank you. And if they're not to Do act you know? on that. So you know? Yes, I know, because God intended for those men to continue. Marrying and oh. appropriating. Now, here's the next question: Is but that are you going to have babies in your 60s? Because that's how you think God made it. Well, the prime minister of my country did at age 70. Oh, so nobody, nobody. So, uh, okay, so you uh, intend, nobody do you intend to have babies in your 60s, 70s? Because God's given you a if I, if I live in a culture where it's socially advantageous okay, or even necessary for him to do so, sure. So here's the thing: you just by dint of your biology, you want to have babies, not because you happen to be with someone who you love and love you made a commitment to. Love is not. Thank you. Love is not the main purpose. Not the oh, only pr no, well, love is not the, the main purpose of marriage. Because they read the Bible for women, that was their curse. Okay. That they will be child. They will be so taken through childbirth. Can you tell me then from the Quran, what is the main purpose of marriage? But no, because I want you to answer my Please, question. Please, no, answer of, mine. Of, no, answer mine. No, 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 what is no, the main purpose of the question. marriage? If a six-year-old man can still have babies, if a he doesn't, one minute, if he doesn't act on that biological or sexual impulse, I'm asking you, does he? Why is he getting the same reward as a woman in, in your Christian heaven? Why doesn't he get a higher reward when he's had to work harder? The six, like the six-year-old woman doesn't have to refrain or rein in her sexual impulses. The six-year-old man does. Does he get a higher reward in heaven? Um, so our heaven is not about uh, based at all about reward for restraining your sexual urges. In fact, that just seems very odd that, that somehow you can be rewarded for that kind of thing. Our reward in heaven is Jesus simply... Wait, can I finish? Back, can I finish? Can I finish? Can, I finish? can I finish? Can I finish? Our reward in heaven is just to be in relationship with the God who formed us. And we get it by receiving what Jesus has done for us on the cross. He died for our sins. He paid for our sins. If we come to him in repentance, then he is our Passover sacrifice. He is our atoning sacrifice that allows us to be reconciled with God and to have relationships with God. There's absolutely no concept, and I find it very, very disturbing, that in Islam, that you can actually, you know, that the, the idea that when you get to the age of 60, that you're kind of restraining your sexual impulses is a source of reward from God. Whereas, again, that, that tells me what kind of odd concept of marriage is it, that it's all, it, again, it all just seems so sexualized. You know, again, yeah, so we, a, I big went, part of it. a big part <laughs> yeah. of it, right, yes. a big part of it. So in Christianity... We don't have that hang up about sex, remember, that okay, Christianity okay. has. Right, this is not about being hung up about sex. For us, women this are not the temptress. They can actually be even a means to the end of becoming more God conscious as well, too, right? So sex is a way of becoming more God conscious? It's, it can be, absolutely, absolutely. If you do absolutely. it within the law, We don't yes. make the... We don't sex make, is... Yes. Let me just repeat yes. that. Yes. Let me yes. just repeat that. In Islam, sex is a way of becoming more no, God no, no, conscious. No, no, no. You, you, that is really creepy. That is really nothing, creepy. Nothing that I'm powerful sorry. can be from other than God. Right? Don't you agree that sex and sexual orgasm, this is a gift from God? This is, so to Muslims, okay, this so is one of the greatest logic, gifts from so God. So by your logic, you can just do it with whoever you like. No, no right? this is because marriage. This is <laughs> marriage. No, no, marriage. Marriage. Well, marriage. Just, okay, yeah, and marriage no, no, is can cool. between... Uh, min, you know, it's a holy people, union. Four people. But for, you know, whereas well, marriage well, well, in Christianity, of marriage in Christianity, can I, can I, can I make a point? The majority of chose to send were polygamous, like we pointed out time and okay, time can again. Okay, can I make many, a point? Can I make a point? Okay. Marriage, according to Jesus, okay, is one man, no, one woman, not. united for life. Me. Wait a minute. According to the Bible, according to the Bible, you know, the man is supposed to love his wife like his own body. He's meant to lay down his life for his wife, just like Christ laid down his wife, his life, sorry, None for the church, okay, None which is, is which is to live selflessly. Women are supposed and to the submit to their husbands. Of multiple they are meant to, can you wait, please? Yeah, you are meant to submit to each other in love. The Bible says, husbands, love your wives, love your wives, just like Christ loved the church. Now help me out here. Help me out here. 
Where does it say in the Quran, husbands love your wife, lay down your life for your wife, sorry, wives, lay down your life for your wives, treat them so But what we know, but wait, where, show me. It says, it says God put muwadda or love between, between the hearts of the spouses. So it puts love between, yeah. Oh, okay. And muwadda is a type of love yes. that is expressed. Okay. Okay. Not just, uh, okay. not just, uh, not just, uh, muhabba, which is a, just an inside love. It's a love okay, can you show me? Let's look at it, let's look at it, let's look at it. Where is it? Because I also want to hold up, I also want to hold up that example of love with what the Quran also says, which is, oh, let me read it again, this is Surah 4, 1, 2, 8, 1, 2, 9, is a, None of this is a proof for exclusive uh, marriage or monogamy, I, I just don't see it. When you say the husband should love the wife like Christ loved the church, well the church consists of millions of, 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 of members, millions of people. Is that polygamy then? Is he using a polygamous analogy there? No, no, we, well, I've, I've showed you already from Matthew 19. Okay, I'll read no, but that, that, didn't, that didn't say. I'll read it to you again. <laughs> Right, and it also says, oh, it also says, I think in one of Timothy's letters, that 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 that, that Christians should should marry is just that Jesus? one person. Is Timothy? Is that Jesus? I mean, he's confirmed. Let's read it. Let's read Matthew no, no, 19 no. again. Let's read Matthew 19 okay. again. But, but Timothy's not Jesus, is it? No. That's never Paul. Said he was. Never said he was. That's Paul. So. So let's read Jesus. If you if you're hung up about it, let's read Jesus. Well, yeah, actually, Jesus is a prophet. Okay, here we go. Here we yeah. go. Or well, he's God if, for you. So yeah. yeah. He is God. The end. End of. End for of. you. Haven't you read, okay, he replied that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. Two, doesn't say two or three or four. You were implying yeah. earlier, sir, weren't you, that actually this could imply a polygamous, polygamous relationship. No, Martin it Luther can't, okay? Yeah. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and become united to his wife, and the two will become yeah. one flesh. So they're no longer how many? Two, not three, Lizzie. not four, Lizzie. not five. Two Lizzie. will become one. Therefore, Turn off the repetitive what, fire. what God has joined together, I'm just repeating you and I'm enjoying it. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm having a conversation with this gentleman. What were you going to say? Do you know how Martin Luther read that verse? I'm not interested in Martin Luther. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, but, but what but, I am interested in... Martin Luther in. said, you know, you can become one flesh with, with one person, and you can become one flesh with another person as well, too. So, I, I don't see how any of this is an argument for monogamy. That's why you have Christian groups that it's are polygamists, monogamy. right? That's because why there are Christian polygamists, after don't all. Don't separate that because which God has joined in marriage. Exactly, not saying, exactly. Don't well, they're not reading the scripture separate. very well, are they? They're oh, not... Because, no. Sorry, sorry, guys. So sorry, this this is kind of ridiculous. Because I just read very clearly from the scripture that says the two will become one flesh, yeah, right? It doesn't two. mean... It just describes right. yeah. so, the no, no, situation. Where has it limited so to that? Like yeah. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. 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 When right. two get so, married, they become one flesh. Exactly. Okay, so if you're talking to this man... It's a, how does it possibly make no. sense? How does it possibly make sense? You're not listening. Okay, no, because I'm having a conversation with this guy and you're interrupting me, okay? No, but you were talking so, to right. me. So how can it possibly make sense? How can it possibly make sense, okay, for... To be for that to apply to multiple partners okay, at the when same time. Okay, I marry time. wife number one. Okay. We no, but it's, it's a flesh. picture. Yes, when how do you do that without two, meaning to be? No, no, no. Flesh. No, but yes. how? How? Talking without meaning to be graphic. Situation. Without meaning it to be graphic. How do you become one flesh? How do you do that physically? How do you become one flesh? You mean sexual act or thank you, you okay. thank you. Yeah. Okay. And, and so that closeness, else, if you that intimacy. Let's become one flesh with them. them. You're not one flesh with them. You are. You're two flesh. No, you're not. Yes, you are. No, you're, you're, not. You're, not. No. you're united no. with 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 multiple people. Two. That is not one flesh. That's it, absolutely it is, it is one not flesh. one flesh. You're imposing your Islamic view of marriage on Christianity. Your Western understanding. No, you are polygamous. I'm marrying your wife. Is talking. Yes. Yes. Whoever, whoever, whoever gets married, let's okay. Let's the go back. Brother or the sister, or any God family member, because God approves of David's marriage. Right. I'm, it's it's nice to be with a bunch of Muslims here today who are very upfront about polygamy and how they think polygamy is absolutely fine. It should be there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it, so okay. So I'm right. upfront about it because okay, God so was upfront about it. David was upfront about it. Solomon was upfront about it. Why should? If if you want to disown your own biblical tradition, that's up to you. But Muslims are connected. If you have a problem with your biblical, can I address you? Then God is he? I agree is with he? Abraham. Can I address you? That, no, not really, because you're not being very polite. I'm having a conversation with this guy. Oh, I wasn't He's the one keeping me polite. <laughs> yeah, no, no, so he's the one keeping me polite. If you can be civil, I'll, I'll, I'll Can you be civil? We agree to be civil. I'm, 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 yeah, okay. okay, we'll agree to be, we'll agree to be civil. Okay, right. To, to say about your point about the one flesh, I think, let's take the heat out of this. Right. One man, one woman is optimum. 
Optimum. Optimum. It's optimum. No, no. it's I, I, not I, I, just you're optimum. You're being, being it is the only way. Right. We agree to be civil. I, yeah, I am being speak. civil. No, no, you're speaking over me now. You're speaking over me. Oh, okay. One, one man, one woman is optimum in the sense of you hear me talk about the, uh, the, the, the energy of a family man and woman? Yes. But in the Quran, yes, we do have the ability to marry more than one because there are going to be situations like war and, and, and other situations where there are the uh, population of men is depleted and there will be women who are unmarried. So yes, it's there. But, but, one man, one woman? Yeah, no problem with that. We, uh, we've got no argument with that. And, I, and you know, I, I've got no problem with that anyway. Okay, can I, can I, can I reply? Can I reply? Okay. So you're saying that it's optimum, okay? But let's look at what the, let's look at what the text says. Let's look at what the scripture actually says, okay? Okay. Okay. You are, you can marry women of your choice, two or three or four. But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with them, then only one. And it also says, but you can have one who your right hands possess. So actually, you can marry a, a, a free woman and possibly a slave no, girl. But that but that wait applies to the rest of them. That is nearer to prevent you from doing justice. Now, let, wait a minute, go wait on. a minute. Let's flick on a few ayahs, right? Here we go. Two, two, four, one, two, nine. Which is a direct contradiction of the previous ayah. Your book contradicts itself. Therefore, it cannot be from God. Side point, but there you go. Okay. 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 You will never be able to do perfect justice between wives, even if it is your ardent desire. So do not incline too much to one of them by and it says in brackets, by giving her more of your time and provision so as to leave the other hanging, i.e. neither divorced nor married. And if you do justice and do all that is right, fear Allah by keeping away from all that is wrong, then Allah is ever forgiving, most merciful. So it says you have to deal with them justly, but actually you can't deal with them justly. Wait a minute, now I'm finished. And we even see, like I was having a conversation with my friend earlier, that even Muhammad didn't follow this revelation because he was, he did treat his wives unjustly, okay, when Saudah was afraid that he would divorce her because she was getting too old. Again, I can't believe that in, in Islam, getting divorced because you're too old is a thing. We don't have that in Christianity, it's faithfulness. What God has joined together, let man not separate. Saudah's solution is to give her night to Aisha. Again, this is all about... This is all about sex. It's all about kind of making sure that Muhammad's sexual needs are fulfilled. Okay? And he doesn't, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he doesn't say, he doesn't say at this point, hey, Saudi, you know what? Please don't do this because actually what Allah is telling me is that I shouldn't incline too much to one wife over another. I shouldn't do that because Allah says that it's wrong. So even Muhammad himself doesn't follow his own revelation. So really, what kind of example have you got to follow? when it comes to marriage. Help me out. Help me understand this. Okay. Well, you made a range of points there, right? And I'd like to deal with the point that actually you're dealing with. It. <clears throat> right. So the first point is this, right? I think we need to Yeah, we're nearly finished, actually. Okay. First issue, being uh, one is Allah says, right, marry two, three, or four, right? So here, the fact that he hasn't mentioned marry one, two, three, or four, right, it's understood that that's optimal. But that you have this ability, hold on, that's ability to marry two, three, or four. It's there, so you can do it. So it's not unlawful to marry more than that, even problems. Okay, now it says, but, and do justice to him, but, but Allah says, you can never be completely just. Right, uh, right, fair, yeah, fair. Because why? Because we're human beings. I may prefer one over another, right? But he says, but what you have to be is just to say, what you give to one, you give to the other, yeah? So, in other words, Allah's saying that you as a human being, you're weak, right? So, but as long as you're, you are just, you give to one, so it doesn't create uh, jealousy, yeah? That's what that's, that's saying. So it's, it's, it's not a contradiction, is it? So, it doesn't right? create jealousy, thank you. So, he's not meant to create jealousy. Right, okay, let's again just read that verse again to see if that marries up to what you're saying. Okay. Okay, it just says, it doesn't go as far as what you're saying, but I'll come to that as well. It says, 
do not incline too much to one of them. Okay, this isn't necessarily about being perfect. Okay, it says don't incline too much to one of them. Okay, and here is Sauda saying, look, I'm going to give you the night that I had with you to Aisha. Why doesn't Mohammed step in and go, actually, Allah has told me not to incline too much to one wife, so I'd probably better not do that. He doesn't say that. Okay, and also you made a good point there about you know, the, the, you're meant to just, you know, actually there's a little bit, bit of give and take, you know, that maybe we could take that another way. We could maybe say, okay, actually Sauda was giving this up of your own volition, it wasn't causing a big problem, so what? The point I'm is, wait, yeah, but wait, okay, I'm okay, 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 okay maybe that, let's say that for the sake of argument, but it doesn't solve your problems, because what you then said, wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second, because then what you did say is that the point is that you're not to cause jealousy. However, when we go to other things, right, about the one I was talking to, my friend earlier about Aisha, right, and, and the other wives getting jealous when the gifts were sent, all the gifts were sent just to Aisha's house, right, and then they sent various parties of the other wives because they were angry to Muhammad going, uh, this, yeah, this isn't fair, this isn't fair, right, and because they were jealous, because they were just, they, he was doing something that was making them jealous, but it's going against what you said, no, 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 hold on, did he order that all the presents to go there, or were they sent there? Exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. That's because she made it sound like, no, 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 it's no, no, it's not, she made it sound like they have to send it to Aisha's house, otherwise he would say, no, I'm not going to accept this gift. Let's read it, let's read it, let's read it. It's, 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 it's a ridiculous thing. Okay. Okay. Because I just want you to ask yourselves, okay? No, 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 just read it. Yeah, I bet, I'm allowed to say this, I'm allowed to say this, don't get upset, right? Okay, you're getting a bit upset, chill, you're right. So I'm saying is just to ask yourself, ask yourself the question, is this a way to deal with conflict in a marriage? Is this a way to deal with conflict, all right? This is from Bukhari, in case anybody's interested in that. Uh, seven, sorry, 345-755. Okay. The wives of Allah's apostle were in two groups. One group consisted of Aisha, Hafsa, Safiya, and Sauda. The other group consisted of Um Salama and the other wives of Allah's apostle. The Muslims knew that Allah's apostle loved Aisha, so if any of them had a gift and wished to give to Allah's apostle, he would delay it. So Allah's apostle had come to Aisha's home, then he would send his gift to Allah's apostle in her home. The group of Umm Salama discussed the matter together and decided that Umm Salama should request Allah's apostle to tell the people to send their gifts to him in whatever wife's house he was. Okay, so we you know, talk about the background stuff. Umm Salama told Allah's apostle of what they said, but he did not reply. So first of all, he just ignores her, right? Then those who uh, then... No, he didn't reply. Didn't okay, okay, then, well... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, then they, those wives, asked Um Salam about it. She said, he did not say anything to me. They asked her to talk to him again. She talked to him again, and when she met him on her day, but he gave no reply. Second time, just like, oh, no, no reply. When they asked her, she replied, and he had given no reply. They said to her, talk to him, talk to him until he gives you a reply. It's like, first of all, he does just ignore her. Seriously. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. They said to her, when it was her turn, she talked to him again. He then said to her, do not hurt me regarding Aisha, as the divine inspirations do not come to me on any of the beds except that of Aisha. They've got an issue with who what houses to give the gifts to. He doesn't even address that. He doesn't address the perceived inequality. He just says, in a way that stokes up jealousy, guys, don't be mean to poor Aisha. I only get revelations with Aisha. What kind of marriage counselling, what kind of relationship build skills is that, seriously? To say to your wives, you know, to basically ignore the issue at hand. Is wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we going away from the point? Please? No, I'll carry on reading the hadith and then you can answer, right? On that, <coughs> Um Salama said, I repent to Allah for hurting you. Okay? Okay. Then the group of Um Salama called Fatima, the daughter of Allah's apostle, and sent her to Allah's apostle to say to him, Again, your wives request to treat them and the daughter of Abu Bakr on equal terms. Then Fatima conveyed the message and the Prophet said, Oh my daughter, don't you love whom I love? Meaning, hey, I love Aisha guys, you know. Really? How insensitive can he be? She replied the affirmative and returned and told them of the situation. They requested her to go to him, but again she refused. They then sent Zena. So this is like their third envoy. First of all, it's Um, um Salama, okay? And then it's, sorry, like three requests. Then Fatima, and then Zena. He went to him and used harsh words saying, your wives request you to treat them and the daughter of Ibn Abu Hayfa on equal terms. They are accusing him. They are not felt. They are not being treated equally. 
Okay, already the prophet has failed to measure up to his own revelation. Okay. Um, on that, she raised her voice and abused Aisha to her face so much that Anna's apostle looked at Aisha to see whether she would retort. Aisha started replying to Zainab till she silenced her. Basically, Aisha gives Zainab a right earful so much that Zainab shuts up. Okay? The Prophet then looked at Aisha and said she really is the daughter of Abu Bakr. In all of this, he hasn't even he's hasn't even been so, bothered to address so did, the issue at did hand. He? And his wives. Okay. You were saying you shouldn't sorry, one second. You were saying that, that this, this polygamy thing only works if you don't stir up jealousy, correct? Wow. That is what you said. No, no, and yet here no, is the prophet acting in a way that deliberately is stirring up jealousy. No. So why are you following somebody? Doing? How? I didn't, hear him do, I didn't hear him doing that. And plus, the very point you were going to make, the very point, I'm replying, the very point you're going to make was that he was somehow distributing the, the not distributing all the gifts that other people would give, right? Himself. And no. What he did is he kept silent in order not to face no. This is what the people are doing. This is what they are doing. Right? He kept silent in order. So none of the wives would think, oh, look, uh, he's speaking on behalf of those people. No, he, he kept silent. But the point you made is not made by How do you know why he kept silent? Can you see inside his head? That, oh, on, How do you know? You can't, you, you're making an argument the point, silence. No, no, hold on. The point that you're making is not made by that lady. He's not favouring any one of them. Not from that they, day. the wives, are complaining to him because they are not treating them equally. Right. No, no, no. That but, but very point is being made. No, it's too. not. Your point was he was somehow the author, the actual author of all the presents being like, distributed to one place, and he wasn't. Other people no, said that. No, I never said that. I never said that. No, that was his. No, 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 no. That's not the point. I don't, don't make. I'm sorry. Don't, don't put that on me. I didn't say that that he was the, the the instigator of the problem. I'm saying to you. Well, you were. No, no, you were. No, 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 no. I'm saying. I'm. I'm saying. I'm it's looking at how he looked. He, no, I didn't say. It's on camera. Does it You insinuated that. Yes, you did. I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying I, my issue is how he responds to this problem. No, you, not that he it instigated this. It's how does you he respond to it? A, he ignores his wives. He ignores his wives. Okay. Secondly, he doesn't address the issue at all. Thirdly, he stirs up jealousy by saying how much he loves Aisha and he only gets revelations on the beds of Aisha. And then he even goes against his own revelation in Surah 4129 where he's not inclined to one wife too much over others. So why are you following? Now answer my question. Why are you following a man who does not even obey Allah's revelations? Well, he does. He does. Well, he does. I, I remember. He does. I remember. I remember hearing. Yes. Yes. Come on. I, I, I remember. Okay. Come on. I remember hearing once on. another hadith. I remember. I remember there was another. No. There's another hadith I think I, where. No, no, I think I've been fair to you. I've been fair to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here's the I've final parting thing for me: is that the, the Prophet peace be upon him, he, he gathered all of his wives together, and and he had some kind of a simple necklace or something, and he said, "I'm going to gift this to the one that's most beloved to me," and that's where some murmuring started between some of the other wives that he's going to give it to Aisha. Why? See, there's a context already of where they were jealous of her this is natural in human beings their, their perception was that because she's uh, younger because she's more beautiful that's why you know he loves her more so he so they started murmuring that he's gonna give it to Aisha and 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 so then he called his daughter Fatima in little Fatima his daughter gave her the necklace this completely what's the you know uh, extinguished you know the situation Fatima his, his daughter yeah. so and, and and all the wives found this cute and funny because okay she's the one that he loves the most so he, he did he did do his part he did his human part to treat them justly and to make sure that you know to to extinguish their perceptions you know that he's treating anyone unfairly or anyone better than the other this is, this is all i can say leave you with you know he made that effort to, to extinguish that perception you know? god bless you sir thanks for talking to me today i've got more respect for you now because you tackled it. Well, I respect everyone that's speaking to God bless you. But seriously, come to Jesus, man. Repent and believe in Him. Like, this view of marriage is terrible. Like, we, Prophet we, Muhammad we're is a very so well. immoral But, but your view of marriage so well. is disconnected from reality, as you admitted. Because the six-year-old woman cannot have children. The six-year-old man can. And I ask you, why did Jesus create the six-year-old man? Why did Jesus create six-year-old men who can have hundreds of babies? Think, they can father think, hundreds of babies. Think, sorry, do you not think you have it in your power to control your sexual urges? Okay, then would you at least admit that God has so required more question. of men? Answer my question. Okay, would you do you not least... believe that you can... You can yes, yes. Okay, you can, so so can. would you at least then acknowledge that God has required more of men? In this respect, he's required more of men? 
the six-year-old woman doesn't have to battle her urges to have sex with a 20-year-old man. The, the average six-year-old woman doesn't have to do that, right? You, you, you are not a man to be able to speak on our behalf. So the six-year-old man can still have no, hundreds I, I get, of children. I, I get so, how it works. That, so is, it, so it is it something more, I get how it works. The point is, more required of the him? Point is, the point is, is that what is required, what is required is, is that is we love the sins. Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and an live an in the ways that he has called, called us to do. And he calls us, in, in scripture, marriage is between one man, one woman for life, and all sexual activity outside of marriage is wrong and forbidden. Okay, and he has asked us because 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 it's such a powerful act of communion and love, and it's a powerful act, obviously, to how children are made. But, but and it's such an exclusive expression of love. If I if if my husband went off and like brought home another wife, I would feel unimaginably betrayed because love can only really meaningfully exist in a context of absolute exclusivity and faithfulness. You know, so I you're saying the say prophets never loved their wives. Okay, okay. David never loved his wives. Look at what you're saying. Your judgment of them is that yeah. Abraham never truly loved any of his wives. Solomon never truly loved any of his wives. Does it make sense to you? No, no, that's not, not any of them. I'm saying if you look at, he did, if you, again, like I said earlier, you know, Solomon's wives were a snare to him. And even if you look at the example of, like, let's take Abraham and Hagar and um, Sarah, that leads to huge issues and difficulties and problems. Okay? Because of... There's the, problems because in the fact, monogamous because marriage because all the time, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not an argument know, against monogamy. I know, I know. Well, uh, yeah, but you can't although, say, you can't say, some radical you feminists would actually use that as an argument against marriage well, itself. I'm not a radical yeah. feminist. No, not you. I'm saying some radical feminists would use the fact that there is oppression in marriages in general. There is abuse in marriages in general. They use that as an argument against even the institution of marriage itself. They would say by its very nature is misogynist. So you're going down a similar line of reasoning. You're saying that because these polygamous marriages had troubles in them, this is an argument against polygamy? No, but you're, you're kind of reversing that. You're saying that because um, there are problems in monogamous marriage, marriages, so that's an argument against monogamy. I'm saying that love is not a meaningful thing unless it is, it, it ceases to be real, it ceases to be real exclusive love. You know, and just in the same way, if you look at the picture of, of Jesus, that this is another way. Can wait, you love wait, all wait, three wait, persons wait, wait, of the wait, Trinity wait, equally? Wait, wait, oh, 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 nice, <laughs> nice. See what we did there, right? Okay. <laughs> no, no, because one minute, one minute, one minute. That was no, but one minute, one that minute, was... one minute, Liz. But seriously, <laughs> my. But, but my love for my wife doesn't have to be exclusive and it doesn't have to have to be 100% of my like heart that. and my soul. I like <laughs> Wait, in Islam, Salim, Salim. In Islam, hold on. That is sincerity. In Islam, I like that. in Islam, in Islam, have I ever been commanded to love my wife with all my heart and all my soul? In Islam, am I commanded to love my wife with all my heart and all my yeah, soul? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. But in your, but but we are commanded to love like God that. with all our heart and all our soul. That means you have to love the Father with all your heart and all your soul. But you still have to have enough heart left over to love God the Son with all your heart and all your soul. And you still have to have enough heart left over to love the Holy Ghost with heart. If you can do that, then I can have four wives. Yeah. That was fantastic. That was a brilliant moment. It's like she went, oh. No. I'm not. I'm just loving the way that you had to suddenly disappear from the topic. No, it's, it's related to the topic. If you're saying I can't no, can do I, justice can I, to I three, talk about Jesus. how can you love three with all your heart and all your soul? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Um, Jesus, right, is at the end of time in Revelation, he's going to come as an amazing bridegroom, right, to the bride of Christ, right? Who, are, who is Christ? Who is the bride of Christ? It's the church. People who have submitted their lives to Christ, who have found in Christ, who have been clothed with Christ's righteousness, okay? All of because of what Jesus has done on the cross. The, there's a picture of, of the church, it's a beautiful bride with Jesus. He's only going to be united with his bride. He's not going to be united with like people who don't love him, people who don't love Jesus, with, you know, I'm afraid he's not going to be united with Muslims because you reject everything that Jesus is, okay? So from that point of view, do you see what I mean? That's, that's a picture of, of what marriage is, absolutely exclusivity and absolute faithfulness between two people. And there's a picture of it, of Jesus. Jesus. I seriously want to repose the question of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Just one moment, it's related. When you, when you love Jesus, when you love the Father with all your heart and soul, you love the Holy Ghost with all your heart, are you saying you do not incline more one towards the other? Do you ever incline more towards loving Jesus more than the Holy Ghost? Or you love the Holy Ghost as much as you love Jesus? So if the, if the Holy... 
So if, if God the Father came here incarnate, and if the Holy Ghost came here and incarnate, and the Son came here and incarnate, which one would you run well, to first? Well, here's, here's the thing. You're, you're very interesting. You have to incline towards well, one or the, the other. No, but what you're doing is you're kind of coming up with a kind of philosophical possibility, which is pretty interesting. I've never thought of it that way, but... <laughs> it's not philosophical, well, no, here's it's the thing. practical. But no, 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 it's not, it's not. Because well, actually, actually, I... I um, follow what's in the revelation. Okay, I follow. I follow what's in the revelation. The incarnation part of it is okay, not practical. The, no, 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 but the practical so, part so of it is. So I follow the Trinity the as it, I follow the Trinity. <laughs> Huh? You, the the no, no. incarnation example I gave you of the three, that is, uh, that is uh, philosophical, that's not practical. But practical is that every day in your life, you should love the Father with all your heart and all your soul. Would you agree? Yes. But, okay, thing, but you should also love, thing. you should still have enough heart left over after you've given 100% of it to the Father. You still have to have uh, okay, enough no, heart no, no, left no, over okay. to love the Son no, with all no, your no, heart and all your now soul. You're, now you're delving into the kind of percentages thing that doesn't really work. The percentage thing doesn't really work. Okay? Because I love God, I love the Godhead, but the you triune God. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I love, I love the Godhead. No, no, because then you're talking about creatures. Then you're talking about how you divide your love between creatures. And that's different. I'm talking about my love for God. God is not created. God is uncreated. Okay? So, from that point of view, I love the God as how he's revealed himself to me. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I love the Father with my heart, mind, soul, and strength. I love the person. I love the person of his Son who is the, with whom there is no contradiction between the, who the Father is and who the Son is. Everything the Father does, the Son also does. Everything, you know, the father didn't put yeah, his the, life the, the on father, the cross the and father, suffer for the you. Father, no, but the son did. Because the son, the son did. did, yeah? So you should love so the son more than... No, no, the son, you know, because it was the father who had the plan of salvation in the first place. It was the son who worked out the plan of salvation by putting himself on the cross. It's his Holy Spirit who lives in me, who works towards my salvation. I don't have a comp I don't feel in any way that my love for the triune God in the Godhead is divided at all. I can say with absolute confidence that I love him all. I can say with absolute confidence. I don't shake hands out of you, if you know for the reasons why. I don't know. No, I'll talk to him later. Right. Nice to meet you. What's okay. your name, sir? Sadat. 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 And you're from out of town, right? Yeah. yeah. Canada? Yeah, I'm Canada, yeah. I'm yeah. good. Canada, America. Yes, yes. Good Always good Canada. God bless. Thank you for talking to me today. Okay, take care. Bye. Right. Hi, Glenn. So, let's talk about... God bless. What's your name? Sam. 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 Where are we? Yeah, I need to... Okay, so... Uh, uh, yeah, we were just having a very interesting conversation there about marriage. Um, I started talking about the Quran, how the Quran says that you can marry up to two, three, four wives at a time. Uh, the, the, the conversation started very strangely, somehow implying that um, men can have babies well into their 60s, therefore somehow they, uh, in a way that gives them the right to kind of marry more, have more children, which seems like a very odd thing to do really, over controlling um, their sexual urges for the sake of love, for the sake of giving themselves up to one woman. Um, I also showed them the contradictions that are um, that arise when you also look at Surah 4128, which says that you shouldn't incline more to one wife than the other, so that you can't actually deal with them justly as it says you should do in Surah 3-4. Um, and there seem to be all kinds of excuses raised about that. And then I looked at the two examples of the Hadith where it's, it's obvious that Muhammad isn't treating his wives fairly and they get angry with him for not treating uh, him fairly. But, um, that again, that's something that they seem keen to kind of talk their way out of and, and make excuses for Muhammad for. But I'm just so um, glad that I don't follow a God who, um, uh, yeah, his, his view on marriage is that. Of course, yes, there was polygamy in the Bible, but I made the point that actually we don't ever have God's explicit approval for, for polygamy. It's something that always leads to problems. If you look at Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, for example, or Jacob and his wives, or if you look at um, David, obviously, and Bathsheba, if you look at Solomon and his wives, they, all of these things lead, wives are repeatedly a source of conflict. Um, Solomon's wives led him away from the, the, the worship of the true and living God. So, but anyway, as a Christian, um, I accept that these things were happened at the time, that they're a product of uh, the time, maybe. Um, and in that sense, you know, God allows them as a, as a product of the time, but in his sovereignty, he allows them in his sovereignty, but he doesn't explicitly say it's a good thing. 
But if there's any confusion on this, I go to the Lord Jesus Christ. What does he say? Matthew 19, he says, so the Creator made the male and female, and for that reason a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife. Um, monogamy. Just like Jesus is going to be our bridegroom at the end of time. Complete love existing in a sense of complete um, exclusivity to the other. Women are meant to love their husbands, submit to their husbands. Um, cry, uh, husbands are meant to love their wives like their own body and lay down their lives for their wives. So which which version of marriage would I rather have? Absolutely hands down, I'd have Jesus' version. God bless you guys.